everyone and welcome to the Stamp Around the UK April vlog hop or vlog hop as it is. Uh, again, uh, I'm Linda from lindaspapercraft.co.uk. Uh, I'm a stamping up demonstrator and I am um, teaming up with a group of stamping up demonstrators and this month we're actually um, showcasing our favourite technique. So my favourite technique I have um has been around a very short time for me i've only just started doing it because i've only just found the stencils and brushes that i find work together i've tried this before and hated the effect and really struggled to get smooth transitions and get smooth colors and then stamping up brought out these beauties which are our blending brushes and they are just full of bristles they're so soft and easy to use and they bring um it's beautiful the way it colors the paper and then after watching a lovely video that our sarah douglas did then i discovered that uh, you know this this we've all done in the past is not the way to do it that you to hold the end of it and just gently add that color to your project so then these came out and then these came out which i'm trying to find the page on page 61 um that 65 even they are these layering masks and what i'm going to show you today is how they achieved this card which is my favorite i think it's absolutely beautiful and um, so i'm going to show you the, the techniques that they used to uh, make this card now before you start you need to do some messing with your template with your stencils um because i did this in a class this specific card in a class and we had a right game trying to work out which way up the template was the stencil was or the mask was um and I'd find that I'd done it with the big flower this side and the small flower that side, but the other person had done it the other way around because they'd turned over the stencil. So trying to match the leaves in and line everything up was really difficult. So I decided to have a play without doing any inking, just actually have a look at the masks. So I've got the two here that we're going to use and everything you need is on here. So we've got the larger flower images, the detailed flower images, the... Uh, two different sorts of leaves and what I started to do was I took this image and thought right where do these leaves fit so I faffed about and discovered that they fit about there now the key to this one is to make them fit is that little dent there goes between these two petals so what I then did was I got my sharpie and wrote on both of these R in the bottom left hand corner. So when I've got the R in the same position and the right way up if you like, so it's not backwards, I know that these stencils will match with the flowers. So I'm not flipping, flapping, wondering what to do. So also when you are inking on these two, you ink on one, slide it over, ink the other. Just make sure you don't turn it over. And then you've got the images matching up perfectly. That's the detail from that small flower here. This is the detail for that small flower there. So let's see, let's put it into practice. Um, and I was thinking, I might actually see if I do the leaves first, if it's any easier to line it up. So I have got myself a piece of card, which I've already lost. Right, we'll do it on this one, even though it's a very big one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is attach this piece of card to my paper. Oh, I found it, it's here. Honestly, this, this lovely tidy thing that you see on camera belay, belies an absolute mess <laughs> surrounding it. So I am now going to pop that on there. So I need to fix my paper to the grid paper and i'm going to use um post-it notes or no post-it tape i've got some post-it tape here so what i'm going to do is first of all 
just put a couple of strips of post-it notes. So I'm actually fixing this piece of card to my, um, what's the word, grid paper. Okay, so there's lots of ways you can do that. A little bit of glue on the back and stick it down, but this is the way I'm going to use today. Now, because these are multiple use stencils and I just want to use the leaves on this, I need to cover up that flower. Okay, and I also need to cover up the edges of the stencil. So I'll start at the bottom, because otherwise you get a lovely little shaded area on the edge of the stencil, which you really don't want. Okay, so I am winging this slightly, hoping that I can um, line up the flowers once I've inked the leaves. So just popping that on there. So I'm covering up the middle flower because I don't want that on it. And I'm also going to cover these leaves here because I don't want those. Okay. So you do end up using a lot of post-it tape, but you can reuse it. It's still sticky enough after you've done this. And I just find it a bit easier because the thing is with the post-it notes, you've got that other bit that isn't sticky, that's flapping around all over the place and getting in the way. So this, it's all sticky. So I just need a little squidgy piece just to go in this gap here. And there we go. Right, so to colour these leaves, I'm going to use Old Olive. And I'm just going to see if I've got a greeny. There we go. So I've got a greeny um, brush there. I do wash them every now and then. You don't need 50 brushes. Um, you need, I've got six and a, and a dry cloth. Uh, and I'm just going to double check. I'm just wiping that on there and then on here. And you can see there's nothing coming off that. It's absolutely fine. So I'm going to use some old olive on this one. So the big secret as well, dry cloth. Do not use a wet cloth in between while you're doing it because it will spoil the effect. So I'm just going to lightly pick some ink off here and I'm just going to tap it gently on the uh, grid paper and then I'm starting off the project and I'm just gently swirling my bush, brush around, just gently adding some ink to these areas that are exposed. And uh, anybody who's ever done ink blending, you know, you can add it, you cannot take it away. Okay, so a little bit more ink and then starting off again and just gently circle, circle, circle. Yeah. If you circle the other way, you're getting the ink on the other side of the bristles off, so you can see they're coming up quite nicely there. Okay, so I'll do the top ones. Tap, tap, tap. Coming in off the project and gently on, just circling away, circling the other way to get all the edges. Okay, and I'm going for quite a subtle effect. I don't want it to be really, really dark. And again, we forget you just gently, you know, that ink will get there. You don't need to press on. And if you do press on, this is why you end up getting brush marks and things. I remember some appalling brushes I had from years ago that were like shaving brushes. And you just couldn't get, once you'd got a splodge, that was it. You've got a splodge. Now, the more observant of you will see that I went straight onto the leaf there. I've got away with it because these brushes are so good. Uh, but it is worth starting off first. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I think we've got... It's it's quite uh, misleading. You think you've got hardly... It, there's no colour there at all. And then when you take the masks off, there's actually loads. Okay, so there we go. Right, so I'm just going to rub that on my cloth just to get the excess off and then yep there's no green coming off that at all so i'll pop that to one side um and now as i say don't take the corner ones off because that's where it's holding your um paper down 
I'm just going to gently take off my post-it notes, put them to one side so I can use them again. away before <laughs> she says before she puts her fingers in it and then puts her fingers in it okay. I'm just gently going to take these all off and I find obviously in a class in if I'm using these in a class which I've done you can't well, you could if you wanted I tend to wash them when I'm done unless I'm making loads of cards. If you're making loads of cards, then just wipe them with the damp cloth. Um, the reason I don't want damp cloths around when people are in between blendings, because as I say, if you get your brush wet, then um, it's more difficult to, um, you're not gonna get the same effect with the blends. Right, so I've still got the R, correct way up bottom left hand corner, and I'm now going to position this so I can see the leaves. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see the leaves through the camera, um, but I'm just getting this so that the leaves are roughly around the flowers. And then I'm going to get my sticky strips again. And use them. Now again, we don't want these flowers, so we need to cover those up. So I'm just going to go in there to hold that and then down this way to hold that one and then across here there. and as I say we need to cover up these two flowers because they are quite close can I get them with one piece oh I can there we go so I've just covered that up with the one piece I'm still going to cover this corner up here. I doubt I'm going to get that far out, but you never know. And then this bit here as well. Okay, so I've got that all covered up. And uh, now in the in the book, in the catalogue, they use pinks for this, but I'm actually going to use yellows. Um can't find it now. You'll have to take my word for it. Yeah, can't find it. But they use pink on theirs and I'm going to use yellow. So I'm actually going to use So Saffron and not Daffodil Delight. I'm actually going to use Mango Melody because I think it's a beautiful colour and the two go together really well. So because it's the bigger one, I'm going to use the So Saffron first. So I need a yellowy brush. So I've got a yellowy orange one, but I've not got a... So I'll go with the cleaner one. That's obviously in historically not done a yellow. It's done maybe a blue or a oh it was um no it wasn't blackberry bliss. That one's blackberry bliss. But as you can see, it's just staining. There's no ink coming off. Right, so I'm going to start with our so saffron. Just picking up some ink. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. And then coming in, it's like your ink telling you customers how to uh, ink up their ink their stamps isn't it tap 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 not thump 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 okay so I'm going to just slowly going to add the soft so saffron so, and again I did forget I can tell, I don't know if you can tell, that stamp's being used for rainbows. Not by me. <laughs> my ladies in my class last week, we were doing rainbows. With the beautiful rainbow happiness set. Rainbow of happiness set. It's beautiful, fabulous. So flexible as well. Right, so I'm slowly building this ink up. Just re-inking my brush gently in between. So. And I found well, generally we're very use, very good at using the centre of our um, stamp pad. And so we end up with no ink here and loads of ink in the corners. So I do try and use the whole ink pad when I'm doing this. Just picking up some bits of ink and then just softening it off. And in we come here. 
lovely way to spend a sunny afternoon. The only trouble is the sun goes straight into my window, so I've had to actually shut the curtains so, so I can do this because it was so bright. I did try it without, but it just looked awful. So. I shall be reopening my curtain as soon as I'm finished here. Okay, so I think we've perhaps not got, need a little bit more, so I'm just going to go into this corner here, tap, tap, tap. And then on to here. There we go. So. There we go. So I'm just going to take my brush and just take the most of that so saffron off. So that we've not got any ink coming off. Oh, sorry about the alarms going off there. And I'm just going to take off all my bits of post-it note tape. I got this off Amazon. Uh, it's really, really useful. It's 17.7 um, oh, metres and it's just over an inch wide. Um, so it's, it's an inch wide. And uh, it's just really useful to have. And just re remember, you don't have to use it just the once. So... Stick those around. Not taking them off in order so they're getting a bit tied up. Uh, and then as I said before, what you need to do is remember don't turn your stencil at all. Don't turn it round, don't turn it over, <laughs> just move it across. So there we go. Okay, so now you can see there. How beautiful is that looking? And the leaves are just about in the right place. So I'm really pleased with that. That, that to be fair, that's the nearest I've ever got. Right, so now looking at the roses, you have a little circle here and a little circle here and they are the center of the roses and they match up with these two little circles here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Because you've done your really pale color first, you do have to hunt for it. Hunt, 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 there it is. Uh... Yeah, all yellow. It is quite forgiving, but it is better if you manage to line it up. Let's see where that there. Oops, moved it. So you want the minimum. I don't know if you saw there. I moved it slightly, and there's a lot of white showing through. And I moved it back across, and all I can see now is yellow. There we go. Right, so back with the post-it notes. Again, you don't want these flowers. So I'm actually going to cover that there. Okay, and then we'll have that one there. Oops, no, that's going to show. Because you think you're being really careful and you're avoiding all these extra holes and then you find you're not. That brush has gone much further over than you thought it had. Okay, so there we go. Get a nice long piece down here. There we are. And then I'll put that little one there. I think we should be all right. Okay, so now, now because we're moving to a darker colour, I'm okay to use this brush. I'd be loath to go the other way. So, um, right, and again, I'm just coming in from the edges, picking up the ink here. Because it's been very much stamped in the middle. <laughs> so I'm just tapping, ooh, I've gone a bit. Rather a lot of ink, although it's quite a, a much darker ink, so you're going to get a much deeper. So I'm coming off and going on. And you can see straight away how much deeper this colour is. That it's, it's you know, the card is picking up the colour as soon as we start. Uh, just gently holding it as it goes across. So I thought I'd do the yellows because it's such a sunny day today and sunny sail. 
So, and I've used these stencils. There's some background stencils that come with this set as well, which are fabulous. Um, and I'm actually filming this on the day that we get to find out whether or not... Oh, no! It's in the mini catalogue, so you find these are available till June. Um, if they were in the new catalogue, uh, the annual catalogue, that's finishing soon. Um, and the retiring list comes out today. So that's very quickly gone on. Not sure what I've got going on there. No, it's fine. Okay, and so we'll have a reveal um, and see what it looks like. So it's going to be a much more subtle effect than the one in the catalogue because I've used more subtle colours. Just going to clean my brush up on my cloth. lot of yellow ink there and then I'll yep so that's no yellow at all so I'll put it in the you know I will wash those um but as I say you can use on similar sorts of colors so yellows going darker you could use a yellow a brush you've used on yellow then onto red um as long as you're going darker and you get as much off as you can in between you don't have to have 50 brushes Although it is tempting because they are so nice and work so well. Okay. Oh, that one comes next. So, and as you can see, there's still quite a bit of life left in my post-it notes. Or my post-it bits tape. So, right. Oh, that's a, holding it down. And there you go, how beautiful is that? Just look at that. I mean, it's very subtle because I've used the paler colours. Um, but I think what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to uh, pop off and die cut it out and put it on the front of a card. Um, but I think you can see if I get up there, how beautiful is that? That is just such a soft, subtle effect. Just using a few stencils and just a few tips. I'd say the biggest one is line them up before you start and put your little marker in the corner. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, pop into the comments and you're going to see a list of all the Stamping Up demonstrators that have taken part. So uh, hop onto their links and have a look at their videos. There's going to be some amazing, really different uh, techniques in this blog because we all have different favorite techniques so do have a look um and uh, thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and i'd love it if you could subscribe um to my channel as well that all helps the algorithm so take care hope to see you again soon bye